Hello. Hey, I just want to do a quick demonstration for you right now on seed saving with tomatoes. You can see all these different kinds of heirloom tomatoes I've got out in front of me here. Maybe I'll show you some of them before I actually do them. This one over here is speckled Roman. It's like a paste tomato that's red with gold stripes. I've got Cherokee purple. I'm sure many of you would be familiar with Cherokee. This is White Queen. These are Juan Flamme, just a really beautiful dark orange, larger than a cherry. As some people refer to them as a salad tomato. This is Orange Russian 117. The inside of this is actually marbled uh, red and gold. This is Big Yellow Zebra. This is Pale Perfect Purple. These over here are um, Brown Sugar. This is Kellogg's Breakfast. This is Black Cherry. This is Chocolate Stripes. Very beautiful tomato. And this last one right over here is Emerald Apple. In fact, um, all the this is not all the different kinds of tomatoes that I have, um, but these are the ones that happen to be ripe right now. We've tried hundreds of different varieties of heirloom tomatoes to come to the point of growing the ones that we've got here. These are the ones that'll handle the colder weather. They'll handle the season extension that we put them through. They're really good tasting and they've got beautiful color. The chef that we grow for wants something that's very tasty um, and very pretty. And basically the plate is his palette, is his canvas, and he wants to be able to decorate it. And these heirloom tomatoes just do a beautiful job of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab Maybe I'll start with Cherokee here. I'm going to show you how I save the seeds from these. If you were to hold a tomato by its stem and then turn it on its side, you want to cut it on its side. You don't want to cut through the stem end. By cutting it on the side like this, what you're doing is you're exposing all the gel caps that are inside there. And then what you do slide this over. What you do is you just squeeze. You get all those gel caps with the tomato seeds into your bowl. Now, the gel caps have an important function. What they do is they serve as a way for the seed to, um, to actually inhibit the seed's germination while it's in the tomato. So the gel caps keep those seeds nice and safe for you until seed saving time. So why I'm putting them in this bowl is because I'm going to ferment them. So I keep squeezing all those out. You can see how meaty Cherokee is in the middle. The seed is kind of along these outside pockets. Just keep working my way around and just keep squeezing. And after I got them all out, I set that aside. Now all this meat from this that has the juice squeezed out and the seeds will end up going towards some kind of a canned product, whether it's, whether it's going to be tomato sauce or let's say um, stewed tomatoes or something. Or we could turn it into something that we eat for supper, but there's going to be quite a few here today. Again, just work your way around the tomato, squeeze the gel caps into the, the bowl. Now you want to kind of choose your bowl size based upon the amount of material you're going to have. Like I've got this smaller blue bowl here. I would use this smaller blue bowl if I was going to do some of these smaller tomatoes. You have to have a certain amount of juice for it to ferment properly. If I put just a small amount of material, 
in the bottom of a big bowl, what it'll end up doing is probably drying out and not ferment properly. The fermentation is accomplishing two things. Well, it's probably accomplishing more than this, but that I'm aware of. The fermentation is breaking down the gel caps so that when I go to plant my seeds, they will actually be more readily, uh, they'll more readily germinate. I know a lot of people that just take a slice of tomato and just dry it, and that's their seed saving, and it works. But you don't get quite as good a germination as you do if you ferment them. The other thing that fermenting can do, and it's not across the board true, but it can help with diseases. If there's some kind of a disease spore or something like that that's on your tomato, and now you're getting it in with the seed, the fermentation process can help with some of those, but not with all of them. So there's my juice. You can see it's about three quarters of an inch thick or so. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to label it. I'm going to put a piece of masking tape on here that'll say Cherokee purple. And I'll set this aside for anywhere from um, two, three to five days, depending on how warm it is. The warmer it is, the quicker it'll go. The cooler it is, the longer it'll take. So, but what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a white mold, white or grayish mold that'll kind of start to grow across the surface. That'll tell me that it's done. You don't want to wait too long because if you wait till you've got a real heavy coating of mold, the gel caps will be so far gone that the seed can actually start to germinate right in the fermentation. And I have had that happen before. So you definitely want to keep an eye on it. So now what I'll do is I'll just go from variety to variety here and I'll just start cutting them open and saving the seed. Um, maybe I'll show you one more variety here or at least a couple, of, a couple of them as I'm doing them. I'll do white queen. White tomatoes are interesting. Now there was a little bit of a, a brown pocket here in this one corner that I'm going to cut out. White tomatoes are, are really interesting. It, they're not true white. They're really a really, really light yellow. And they have a more mild flavor. Some people really like them, and a lot of people just don't. I like a really strong acidic flavor in mine. So like Cherokee Purple is one of my favorite tomatoes because it's got such a strong acidic type flavor. So I just squeeze them in here, work my way around, getting all the different pockets. And that's all there is to it. So I will set these aside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here in a few days, whether it's two days or five days. And when they're ready to extract out of the fermentation, I'm going to show you how that process is done. So I hope this was helpful. This was a very meaty tomato. Hope this was helpful and um, I really appreciate the encouraging words that many people have been sharing about these videos. I realize that there's nothing fancy about these videos. You're not getting music. You're not getting a lot of editing. It probably doesn't hold some people's attention. It may be a little boring. I feel like the Lord's telling me to create as much content as I possibly can. This morning, and it's only around probably nine o'clock, this morning I've already shot four videos. And when I'm done with this one, I'll have four videos that I can just upload and, and send. So I'm really busy as a farmer and I don't wanna spend a lot of time um, editing and focused on that aspect of it. So hopefully the quality of the content and the information you're getting will make up for the, the old guy that's babbling on and the lack of excitement and entertainment. So 
God bless everyone's day, and I, I hope, uh, I hope your gardens are growing well. Take care. Bye bye.